it is not a surprise at all that they would put, when I say they, the government, would put me and my family on this fucking watch list. First and foremost, I have a foreign last name. Ochuko is not a common American name, right? I traveled, myself and my family, we traveled abroad throughout a span of maybe five or six years. We lived in different parts of the country. I'm sorry, different parts of the world. And my father's West African. My father's black, right? So all that, I guess they felt was enough to put us on some fucking watch list to be watched as some kind of terrorist. It takes these people over 30 years to figure out if me and my family are fucking terrorists. What is this shit really about? What is it really about? Now, this whole thing with the um, renewal of the uh, FISA 702 at the end of this year in December, the possible renewing of it, because they're talking about repealing it. My whole thing is, I don't care about being surveilled. I don't care about people watching, the government watching me, okay? I'm not a criminal. I don't commit crimes. I'm, I live a very boring life. So if they want to spend taxpayers' money watching a boring person, knock your socks off, okay? Um, the What I have a problem with is the information that they're getting, they're using that to manipulate people's lives. They're using it to control people's lives. They're using it to basically for, for criminal activity. What does... Breaking into someone's home while they're at work, what does that have to do with national security? Like breaking in their home in such a manner where they enter your home, right, and, and pull off some sort of shenanigan or destroy your property and then lock your door back so that when you get home and unlock your door and you go in and you discover things have been moved around, your food's been poisoned, or something's been destroyed when you're the only person that lives there. You know, it's like they want to make you go crazy, basically. Or they want to make you look crazy to the public. So there's there's some stuff that's not being addressed. What about the shenanigans that's going along with this stuff? I mean, with the, with the talks of the FISA 702, it's like they're just talking about the surveillance aspect of it and how they're gathering information. But I'm not hearing anything about the shenanigans that go along with this shit. Now, is the government or is Congress totally oblivious to the shenanigans that these people pull off? Being stalked by other American citizens? Being set up by other American citizens and using the police as a tool to do it? I don't hear any of these people talking about this stuff. And from my, what I understand, even if they did away with, even if they do away with the FISA 702, apparently there are other programs out there that would then adopt what the FISA 702 was doing, okay? So it's not just FISA 702, apparently. There are other programs out there that's not in the spotlight right now that's kind of like in the dark that goes right in tandem with this FISA 702 shit. So as I said, it'll be real interesting to see if this shit gets renewed or if it gets re uh, reformed. Um, and if our targeting stops, if it doesn't get renewed and our targeting stops, then... Hell, you you know where the shit came from. But I don't know. All we can do is hope. I, I really do have my eyes on this matter because it is something that has affected my life for a very, very, very long time. As, as it has your life as well. Those of you that are truly targeted and going through this shit. You got so many people in the targeted community putting out videos that aren't really targeted. You got some of these people that are actually truly mentally fucking unstable. And really do need to get some help. Um, and they try to fit in with the people that are really going through this. With the people that are truly on these watch lists. You know, this is some shit that can actually be proven. And I get the spiritual aspect of things and stuff like that. And it does exist. There is a source. But if we can nip this shit in the butt. The stuff that we can see. Uh, things that are tangible. That you can actually do things to create laws and create reforms to prevent these crimes from happening. I'm all for it, okay? I am all for it. Um, I'm not surprised with my last name being Ochuko, as I said. Uh, my father traveled back and forth. You know, we got to go with him on several occasions. You know, 
my, I, I don't have any ties to anyone that it, that is abroad. I don't have any ties. And I have family that I have not talked to since the 90s, I would say. <clears throat> or oh, I take that back. I think around my dad's funeral in 99, there was a couple of fam uh, family members that did manage to come down. Um, but I don't talk to anybody abroad. These people can search my phone records. I don't have any business with anybody that is living abroad. I have no ties to any terrorist networks or none of that shit. And th there's always clues throughout your life. Like, I remember an ex-girlfriend I had. Uh, she, you know, she's Caucasian. We used to spend time at her grandmother's house. And I overheard her and her grandmother talk. And her grandmother said, well, he can't be Muslim because I, he hasn't pulled out a mat and I haven't seen him, you know, pray. Because, you know, Muslims, they pray like, what, five or six times a day? They have the, like, special mats they pull out and they pray. So that within itself, that conversation is like, why would, you know, why would that be brought up? You know, I don't speak Arabic. I don't, not to, not saying that you have to be Arabic to be a Muslim, but, or speak Arabic to be a Muslim. But, you know, I, I, I'm as true blue American as it gets. You know, I don't have an accent. I don't talk with a foreign accent. You know, none of that. OK, so there are certain clues that people give you. I had an individual. That I worked with on this job who actually looked up my name. That, that, so this individual, and I'm not going to say his or her name, but this individual has a cousin in law enforcement in a different state. OK, so the reason why this thing was brought up was she talked about the rapper Lil Boozy. And Lil Boozy has videos out that he's being targeted. And it's, it's very clear and apparent that he is because he has videos out of being stopped everywhere he goes by police and this, that, and the other being jacked with. So that's how the conversation started with targeting. And then I felt I could take it upon myself to explain to her my plight in, in knowing that she would have some understanding because she's talking about Lil Boozy's targeting. So in doing that, uh, she mentioned that she has a, uh, a cousin who is a sheriff deputy in the state. I'm not going to say the cousin's name or what state it is, but she said that she could look me up. So I gave her my information. She got with her cousin. She said, give her a couple days and I'll get back with you. I said, okay, cool. A couple days went, back, went by. She got back with me. She told me that I was on the watch list. Okay. So there is a such thing as a fucking terrorist watch list all right now what i don't understand is if you think that a person is a terrorist and could pose a potential threat to the community or to the country or to quote unquote national security where do these shenanigans come in where does uh sabotaging a person's vehicle come into play as 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 a means to protect citizens where does um infiltrating a person's job and, and, and slandering a person and committing all types of shenanigans and directed conversation to psychologically torment and harass a person just trying to make a living. How does that play into national security? What does tampering with and poisoning a person's food have to do with national security? Again, I am, I am not against being watched. You can watch me till the day I fucking die. I am not a criminal and I'm not a fucking terrorist. Nor is my fucking family. My brother served the United States Army. And they're gang stalking him. Okay? We cried when we had to go live abroad away from the United States because we weren't used to African culture, even though our, our, our ancestry is African because of my father's side. I wasn't used to that shit. I, 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 I missed America so much. And, and we asked our father damn near every day, when are we coming back? You know, how, how, does, how, does, how, how am I a terrorist? Remember the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, even though, even though we spent all those years, this is something that we stood up and recited every day in school before we started traveling abroad. That stuck with us. You know, and it's just beyond me how they, how these people think that doing these shenanigans and trying to drive people into insanity and running experimentations on them, that's another aspect of this programming that's not even fucking talked about. 
the experimentation aspect of it, the behavioral modification aspect of it, some shit that none of us signed up for. The same type of shit that Bill Clinton apologized for back in the day, the MK Ultra program. So it's like these governments, they fuck up, right? And then over time, it's like, oh shit, we really fucked up. This, you know, the 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 shit is up to our knees now. Now we have to fix it, and and now we're gonna apologize. It's like a never-ending cycle. They cause all the damage and all this carnage, and then at the end of it, they come and apologize, like, oh, we're sorry, this was happening, we did this, we're we're totally sorry, and then they go quiet for a little while, and then they start the shit right back up again. What what's gonna give? What is going to what's 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 going to give? You know, again, my father's name was Gerald Alfred Ochuko. He passed away in 1999 of an induced heart attack. He was attacked with a directed energy weapon, which caused him to have a fucking heart attack. My father was 43 years old. That's pretty young for your heart to stop pumping. OK. That is pretty young. My stepmother was well aware of what was going on, and she kept her fucking mouth shut because she didn't want the shit happening to her or her children. There were a panel of 12 to 13 Caucasian men and women at my dad's funeral that sat at the very back of that fucking funeral. There weren't many people at my dad's funeral because you have to keep in mind, when you're gang stalked, you lose a lot of friends. Family don't talk to you. You might have a couple people here and there, which there was only a few people at his funeral, maybe a couple from a uh, couple of his, his family members and maybe a couple of colleagues, something like that. Myself, my siblings, my mom and my stepmom. OK, so the church was practically empty at the funeral. These panel of Caucasian people and I'm not racist or anything like that. It's, this is I'm just giving it it's for descriptive purposes. These were the, the people that were sitting at the back of the church. OK. They looked at me and my family like fucking snakes. Not a single one of them walked up to offer their condolences. Not a single fucking one. Okay. When the funeral was said and done, I was the only person that even noticed it. I was the only person that turned around. I've always had really great intuition. My situational awareness is phenomenal. And I said to myself, who are these people that are sitting at the back of the church? that didn't, didn't even come up to offer their condolences or introduce who they were. And immediately, I knew that they had something to do with what happened to my father. When it was all said and done, these individuals got up. They walked out the church. I walked over to, like, the window of the area that they exited and saw these individuals get in these black, S these black presidential government-looking SUVs and drove off. Again, my father worked for the American Cancer Society as a research analyst. He found something out about cancer that he was going to go to the media about. My father was gang stalked the last few years of his life. We had no idea what was going on as his children. Do you know what my father used as confirmation to know that he wasn't losing his mind? My father started taking us with him on his errands. My father never took us when he had to go take care of business and run errands. We, we, we stayed at home, you know, but he started taking us so that if the innocent eyes of a child can point out something is wrong with the situation, that would be validation that he knew that he was not fucking crazy. And sure enough, we noticed the vehicular harassment, the vehicular stalking, the aggressive driving around my father. These people trying to run his vehicle off the road with his children in the fucking car. We were able to point that shit out. There was a, a, a situation where my father went to the ATM in the middle of the night. My father never took us anywhere with him in the middle of the night. He packed us in the car. We went with him. He went to the ATM, and sure enough, these other cars had pulled up. I think I was about maybe 15, 16 years old or something like that when I, when I observed this shit. This one lady gets behind him, and it's like in his personal space. And then, and then an argument ensued, and my father just left. See, he really didn't have to go to the ATM. He just did it so that he could see for himself, or he used it so that we could see, and if we mentioned anything about it, that would be confirmation to him that he was not losing his fucking mind. 
my God, if my children can see this, I know that I'm not crazy. Because I'm pretty sure other people that he had spoken to about it was telling him that he was crazy and that he needed psychological help. So he knew the people around him were compromised. My father knew the people around him were compromised. So the only thing he had left to do was to get confirmation from the innocent eyes of his children. Not once did my father go into detail as to what was going on. All he did was he got our confirmation and he left it at that. He just made up some excuse like, oh, you know, they're just, you know, people are just are rude sometimes. He chalked it up to that. My father was getting law enforcement en encounters. Mind you, my father had never been locked up in any fucking jail, any jail, even in West Africa. My father did not have a criminal record. The only record you may find is that I think he took somebody to court for something. He sued somebody. Yeah, he's had like maybe a traffic ticket or two or something like that. But no criminal offenses. Okay. So this whole 9-11 Patriot Act bullshit comes about, right? So they then furthermore use this shit as a means to get rid of me and my family. As, as, as like the, their garbage disposal, I guess, uh, so to speak, right? Put us on this program and allow this program to basically destroy us. Hence, excuse me. Hence the shenanigans, the psychological abuse and torment surrounding us with all these fucking narcissists, these flying monkeys, these degenerates. Okay? It's like Tony Montana said in Scarface. So they can point their fucking fingers and say that's the bad guy. These people are trying to cover up their dirt. And they're trying to take good people and make them out to be bad people they're essentially creating terrorists they're creating manchurian candidates when you hear about the shootings that happen in this country the mass shooting is there not anyone that has enough sense to try to connect the dots and ask the right questions as to what's really going on with this situation do people ever wonder why the media doesn't thoroughly investigate the history of the person that was involved in the shooting what was this person talking about? What, what was being said in their emails? Did they have a YouTube video? What did people around them, you know, what, what were they telling people around them? Now, you have to know that the news media is in on this shit as well. They're not going to give you the truth. They're going to chalk it up to say, oh, it's mental illness. This person was just mentally ill. Really? All these people were fucking crazy? They were just born defective and just had mental illness and just went out and just did this for no fucking reason? Come on now. But see, there are too many people out here in this society that they're happy with what they have, right? They don't want to ruffle any feathers. They don't want to go against the grain of the government by asking the right questions, by actually investigating certain things because they don't want what's happening to us targeted individuals to happen to them. So they keep their fucking mouth shut. So when the media does come about and ask what was going on, these people are more inclined not to say that this person was complaining about being stalked and harassed. If anything, the same people that they're interviewing was involved in their fucking harassment. Do you know these devils will go as far as to say, oh, he was such a sweet person. He was so quiet. He didn't bother nobody. But it'll be those same motherfuckers that was involved in the targeting that drove that person crazy, that drove them into that type of situation. These people are fucking snakes and they can't stand when the snake gets out snaked they want to try to call you a snake because you're smart because you have this intelligence about you to be able to see through their bullshit and maneuver yourself around it to uh, present yourself from having to experience some sort of grief these people work in groups and they work together to come against one person you motherfuckers are cowards nothing more than fucking cowards pussies These people will never face us individually. They always got somebody who has their back. They always got somebody, you know, uh, uh, in the midst, watching and observing. So they can come in and lie to the police, which a lot of law enforcement is involved in this shit, clearly. 
we live in a very very sick world and it's hard to kind of just go and live your life knowing that this kind of shit is going on knowing that there are other people out there that are suffering and going through this stuff but other people don't give a damn because it's not happening to them it's not happening to their children so it's not it's not their problem right You got people like me that are trying to uphold the Constitution. You got people like me that, that that's getting arrested for standing up for the Constitution for this country. I don't see too many people willing to get arrested and lose everything. I lost everything when I came out here and I, I will bring I will bring that story. At some point, I'm going to share footage of the shit I went through when I got arrested out here. I was doing well for myself. I had a job. It was consistent. I was able to, I've, I've been able to hold on to the job longer than any other job I've had when I was living in the state of Texas. Doing really well for myself. And these devils, they, they had to come in and find some type of way to get me in their facility. They just had to. These motherfuckers came for me at my residence. I wasn't out at some bar. I wasn't out at some pool hall. You know, I wasn't out partying. Because when you're a targeted individual, you're, you're not just anybody. OK, you got to be real careful about the places that you go. You got to be real careful about the invitations that you accept to go certain places because the devil is on the prowl. These devils are on the prowl seeking whom whom they may devour. Steal, kill and destroy. That is their whole goal and agenda. These motherfuckers got that desperate. They had to they had to concoct. A situation. To where they had to come to a residence that I was living at to arrest me and take me to jail. Melissa's fucking prosecution. On some phony, fake-ass fucking charges. This is what I've had to deal with continually. I've dealt with it in the state of Texas. And coming out here to Florida has been no fucking different. It's the same shit. And you wonder why these fucking cops get shot at and killed. You wonder why certain neighbors, you know meet their demises in the way that they do. They do this shit to the wrong person. You know, I'm the type of person, I'm very cool, calm, and collected, right? I'm a whole lot smarter, more intelligent than what I let off. I see their bullshit and their orchestrations. It's clear as day. But they're not always going to come across a person that is that's, that is as cool as me. They're going to do this shit to the wrong person, there's going to be another news story. Oh, all these people in the neighborhood, you know, got shot up and, and you know, it, it's the same narrative over and over again. All these fucking mass shootings It is a direct result. I am 99.9% .9 sure most of these are a direct result of this targeting fucking program. I just have a question to people that are watching this that are truly targeted, not these fucking perps or fake TIs, but what reason would... The government have to not talk about the shenanigan aspect of it. You know, sh surely watching a person doesn't hurt anything. These motherfuckers want to watch me naked. They want to watch me jack off. They want to watch me taking a shower, undressing, dressing, having sex. Okay, fine. But don't use that information to try to manipulate my life. Let's say you have someone that is watching me that is a fucking covert racist, right? Because I'm dating outside my race. I'm having relations with someone that is not black, that is of another ethnic background. Whether it be Caucasian, Asian, Hispanic, whatever. Then they see this, right? So they have this internal hate. And then they will use that as a means to try to destroy that person. I have been subject to this type of shit. Because I dated outside my race, because I have I have love for all races of people. I don't discriminate with the people that I date or choose to have relationships with. There's good and bad in every culture. There, there's you know that's just the way I see it. But you have these people that are that are hateful, or because I am against, um, or because um, I am not in agreement with homosexuality. You know, it is my prerogative to not want to be involved or engaged in that it is my prerogative to do so i have a right that doesn't mean i hate homosexuals i have lived in houses and been roommates with people that were homosexual i'm not a homophobe i'm just i'm pro-woman you know i i 
believe that a man is made for a woman and vice versa. And I'm entitled to that. The Constitution even says it. But you have these people, because we're in a position that we're on these watch lists, they will make us these targets for these types of groups, right? For these white supremacist groups, for these uh, uh, LGBTQ groups to come after us, to try to set us, set us up to be shot and killed or set up some sort of situation to get us locked up, all because we spoke our mind. Fuck all of you. I will always continue to speak my mind. These are the these are your true terrorists, the ones that are within this country that are trying to silence people that are trying to exercise their First Amendment right, that are trying to exercise all their constitutional rights. All constitutional rights invoked, none waived, none. The Constitution is set in stone. There is no city ordinance. There's no state statutes. OK, there's no state laws. There's no federal laws that trump the Constitution of the United States. It is the supreme law of the fucking land, period. Period. And it's it's sad because it's like when you go through this shit, it's such a lonely journey. It's like you know that there are other warriors out there, right? You know that there are other people out there that are trying to stand up for this shit that are true patriots. I'm not talking about these degenerate, fake-ass patriots that have flags in front of their houses or flags posted up on their cars, running around gang-stalking people or being involved in organized stalking and harassment in the community. I'm not talking about those degenerates. Matter of fact, be very careful of those type of people, these people that have all these patriotic stickers on their cars and shit like that. Those are the main ones that involve themselves in this fucking harassment campaign. Don't pay attention to none of that shit. Pay attention to the actions of that person rather than the clothes that they have on and the, the, the bumper de sticker decals they have on their vehicles. Man. Some of these people that are enact enacting this uh, this terror, this evil upon us, wouldn't last two months in our world. I give it two months. They would kill themselves. They would end up in a mental fucking facility. I have yet to be placed in a mental facility because I'm too smart for that shit. Yeah, they've got they've got me in jail because they you know they always work together to try to get you set up on that front. But they know darn well that they try to put me in a mental facility. I'm not going to spend no time in there. The first day they're going to let me out when when they hear me speak. Unless they've been paid off to 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 gaslight, you know, we deal with that. So um I'm just hoping that there is some sort of change at the end of this year. I am not taking away from the fact that this is spiritual, but there's some very physical shit that's going on as well. You kind of have to focus on what what you can see at the moment to to deal with the problem. There has there the focus has to be on creating laws to prevent this type of shit from happening first and foremost. Creating these laws and enforcing these laws and getting rid of these people that are in government that are corrupt. Getting rid of these fucking snakes. That are truly geared towards destroying this country. They've already destroyed it. I mean look at everything that's going on. Look at the food prices. The gas prices. It's no wonder that crime rate is going up. People are robbing and stealing to try to make ends meet. To try to feed their fucking families. Because that's all they have left. I'm willing to believe that there's some people that. Went to jail on a charge right. And instead of seeing it through. Because you know that you're innocent. It's different if you've committed a crime and you know you're guilty. But if you know you're innocent, some of these people, they get scared. And they'll take whatever deal that they get, whether it's like probation or some kind of diversion program. What I discovered is these diversion programs is gang stalking. They get you out there to watch certain people. They tell you you can't have a firearm, right? They tell you that you can't, you know, there's certain stipulations that go along with it. They get you to go out there and stalk and harass other people so that they can dismiss your case. I have witnessed this type of shit going on in these fucking courts in Texas and in fucking Florida. First hand, some of these people get so scared, they go ahead and sell their souls and take that, take that offer to go out and terrorize other people just so they can get their case dismissed or so they can have some kind of money in their pocket. And this is what our tax dollars is going towards, terrorizing 
other American citizens. Not only do I want to see this program repealed or heavily reformed with, with extreme oversight, I would also like to see these people that partook in this targeting, these treasonous, I would like to see them captured, rounded up, tortured, and then ultimately killed. Wiped off the face of the fucking planet. No matter how minute the part was, you still took part in the shit. You still got yourself involved in it. These people could not come to me. These people couldn't come to me and say, I'm going to pay you a billion dollars to set up nappy to set up nappy head roots. We'll pay you a billion dollars and your targeting will go away. All you got to do is have them at a certain place at a certain time. No fucking way. These are the types of people that they're doing this evil to. People that have hearts. People that have empathy. People who don't care about money. Now granted you need money to survive. And that's the only reason why I would, you know, need money is to just sustain the bare minimum that I have that I need to survive. I don't need name brand anything. I don't need brand new anything. As long as I have what I need to survive, that's good. I'm a minimalist. I don't care about anyone's riches or your money or anything like that. Okay? I just want to work, make an honest living, make as much as I can doing my little job, and, and, and go out and live my life and enjoy the fruits of my labor. That's it. I am not a fucking terrorist. My family, is they're not fucking terrorists. Okay. But it doesn't it doesn't matter. This speech I have had I've I've had talks like this before. I've made videos in the past about this shit before. None of this shit fucking matters. People are going to see this shit and still do the same shit that they do. I just hope it gets to a point to where there are some real warriors that can unite together and stand against this shit in some kind of way. I don't I don't, I don't know what, but some kind of way. There has to be a way to create laws to prevent this type of shit, to put people in jail that stalk in an organized fashion, get together as a mob, and take turns enacting harassment upon individuals. They got all this fucking technology out. They can hack people's phones and all this shit. You can find out who's getting together to do this fucking harassment shit. Okay, if they just so happen to find out where Osama bin Laden was, so they don't they can't use that same technology to find out who these fuckers are that are going around doing this to American citizens. It's the government doing it anyway, so it, it, you know it's 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 them. They know. <laughs> there, there's no effort involved. They already know. They have record of the people that are doing this shit. They truly do. They promise these people what immunity, protections from prosecution, because they're doing it for the government. That shit needs to be exposed. And whoever it was that signed for this shit, they need to be jailed. Whoever it was that, that is in uh, the political arena, whatever judge or, you know, in the fight, whatever, whoever it was that authorized this shit, they need to be fucking jailed. Given a, given a taste of their own fucking medicine. And you deal with these fucking narcissists. You got some situations where you stood up to a narcissist in some capacity, right? And they have friends that work in the FBI and the intelligence agencies. And you know they're constantly always searching for new people to put on this list, right? This kill list. So they'll reach out to their FBI buddies, CIA buddies, NSA buddies. This guy's been a problem for me. He did this, that, and the other. But they won't talk about what they did to you. In order to get the hand that they were dealt from the target, they won't talk about that shit. These people like to fuck with you, and then they'll play victim. When you give them a taste of their own medicine, they don't like that shit. They feel like you need to go to jail. How dare you do that to me? I can do it to you, but you can't do that to me. That's how these people fucking think. So they go cry to their mommies and daddies in government. This person's been a problem. Oh, this person did this to me. And they find a way to get you on that fucking list, which I'm pretty sure I have been inquired about 
on several occasions throughout the years of going through this targeting. I'm pretty sure there have been different people that have gone to the government to try to get me on this list, only to find out, like, oh, he's already on the list. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're, work we're working on getting rid of that one. Don't worry about that. I'm pretty sure there have been multiple queries in reference to me, just as there has been for those of you that are going through this as well. These fucking narcissists that just can't stand you, that hate you secretly, right? The ones that'll kind of smile in your face and act like they're friendly with you and shit like that, but they really hate you. They get together with other people secretly to do directed conversation, to do psychological operations against you. They'll find out things that are traumatic in your life and try to use it against you to elicit some sort of um, emotional response. And then sit there and watch you with their sadistic asses. It, it, it's like they get they get this this thrill. It's like they get an orgasm from it or something. You just see how some of these people look when they see that they have done something to you that is bringing back a memory of something traumatic. They feed off of that shit. So that's where the spirituality aspect of it comes in. This demonic aspect of it. There is no true human being that is of true light and that has empathetic qualities. There is no fucking way that a person could get joy out of the pain and suffering of another person no fucking way and i know i'm cursing a lot that's usually outside of my character but damn it i'm exercising my first amendment right you got to man they're trying to take that shit away they're very close to like totally discarding the constitution of the united states they're closely very closely doing that shit so it is very important to watch out to see what happens Again, I'm not a political person. I didn't vote. I didn't vote for Donald Trump. I didn't vote for Biden. I didn't vote for Obama. None of these fucking people. To me, they're all snakes at the end of the day. It's like the same coin. You got one side playing heads, the other side playing tails, but they all have the same agenda. They just have different ways of going about it. But if there's a situation where there's alleviation, some sort of alleviation to be able to breathe a little bit, I'm all for it. Can you imagine how much success we could have in this life if we weren't going through this shit? How prosperous we would be if we weren't going through this stuff in this world? Do you realize how, how well off and how wealthy we would be if this shit wasn't happening? They do this to certain people because they're afraid of what these people can do. They're afraid of the power that these people have to make change in this world. They do this to people who aren't afraid to stand up to fucking tyrants and bullies and corruption. That's the type of people that they're doing this shit to. Something has got to give at some point. Something has got to give. These people are devils, man. Straight up devils. You can't trust nobody. It's like I've had people reach out to me that I ain't talked to in years. They on that bullshit too. You tell them about your targeting. Under normal circumstances, if you tell anybody about this stuff that you're going through, a normal person would have questions. A normal person would be inquisitive. They would want to know more details. They would want to see evidence. You know it's a red flag when you've talked to somebody that has known you for years, that, that you considered a good friend, and you tell them what you've been going through all this time, and they don't even ask questions. Just very short, brief responses. Oh, please tell me you're joking. And then I go on to furthermore explain in grave detail, paragraphs of explanation. Then I'm done with my correspondence, and they respond back. Oh, that's deep. Really? That's all you really have to say? And I haven't talked to you in like, shit, 15 years? 12 years? Really? What does that tell you? Either this, this person has been one of them this whole time, or they got compromised at the top of the initial uh, communication. Like, you don't know who to trust. 
Now, it does say in the Bible, trust no man but God. Trust nobody but yourself. Kingdom of God is within. God is in you. Trust you. Trust your instinct. Trust your situational awareness. Trust your intellect. Trust your logic. Because that's all you really have. At the end of the day, that's all you really got. I got to be somebody. Even though I don't think much of myself. I know I got to be somebody. Because these people wouldn't go through the efforts that they go through to try to systematically destroy my life and to try to keep me down. Not just me, but all of you that are watching this, that are going through this. You are somebody. They they don't do this type of thing to nobodies. They don't do this type of thing to weak people. They already got weak people. These people that ended up in the mental facilities. You know, some of these people that get in the mental facility, some people, some of these people that end up on drugs, the people that could not handle, as they say, many are called, few are chosen. There's not too many, there's no weak people surviving this shit all this time. I promise you, you are, you are the epitome of strength. To take as many hits as we do and to continue to stand and survive. No matter what capacity you're surviving in, even if you don't have the job making $100,000 a year. Or, you know, or if, if you don't um, have a certain luxury. As long as you're able to survive and you're doing well for yourself. And the most important thing, you have peace within your soul. That's what's most important. These people have no peace within them. They thrive on chaos. I think there's somewhere in the Bible where it says, these people get no rest until they've done evil to you. I'm paraphrasing, but it says something to that effect in one of the books in the Bible. They get no rest unless they have done some manner of evil against you. Then they're happy. And these devils are all around you. These people are fucking sick. I can't say it enough. I can't. These people, some of these people are so sick, There's, there, you can't help them. There's no help in them. So if they can't be helped, vote them off the fucking planet or give them their own little rock to live on. And let them fuck each other up. Anyways, I was, I didn't even mean to talk this long. I was really making this video to share this other uh, video that I came across. Um, yeah, I'll be adding this chat to the video that I wanted you guys to see in reference to the FISA 702 and the Patriot Act. You know, it's, it's so unfair to be placed on a, a list like this and not know why. You know what I mean? Like, these federal agents are going to these courts and lying to these people. Telling them things about us that are not fucking true. Or there may be like half truths to it. They don't even give you a chance to answer for the allegation. You're just totally unaware. They put you on a the list. They watch your communication. Then they have these corrupt motherfuckers. They will share your communications with the community around you through what the fusion centers. Then they got the handlers in each neighborhood that's responsible for, you know, the oversight of that neighborhood. Oh, we got a terrorist here. Let's go ahead and spread the rumors and slander and, and all this old kind of shit. But yet, they protect drug dealers. They protect pedophiles. They protect all these people that are engaging in organized crime. But they want to come after American citizens that aren't doing anything but just working and minding their own fucking business. And not worried about what other people are doing, provided that it, it's not affecting them. They will lie and say I'm some sort of pedophile because I like to record because I, if I set my camera out and I'm recording my surroundings, these idiots will send their children out to play in front of my camera. Or they could already be out there playing and I just decide I want to come sit out there and just sit and enjoy the day. And I'll set my camera up just to record the environment and the surroundings in case any bullshit comes off. They hate exposure. And they got some of these idiots that they'll contact and say, oh, this guy's a pedophile. 
you know, he, he, he'll go on a website and, and post this. And put, like, there's no telling what kind of lie these people come up with. And the government, the government agencies, these intelligence agencies that watch you, they know that you're not a fucking pedophile because they know what you look at on fucking on the Internet and on television. They know that you're not sexually attracted to children. You're not watching material that's uh, uh, pertinent to uh, children engaging in sexual acts. But that's the kind of lie that they'll put out there. They'll try to find something that it is that you're doing or that you like to do, and they will try to flip it and twist it in some sick way to come after you to say that this is the bad guy we need to watch out for. Okay? Before I play the video about the FISA 702, um, situation i'm gonna play another video that i came across of this psychopath um right here this guy right here i think this was in idaho i did a random search of gang stalking in other states because you only hear about gang stalking in your state right but it's like i never come across videos of people that are in just like random oddball states like idaho like who whoever really talks about idaho right wyoming Places like that. So that's how I discovered this. Um, they were talking about st this guy who stalked this family because he, uh, I think he parked in a um, handicapped parking spot or something like that. And he didn't have a tag. And I think somebody approached him about it. And he started to stalk and harass that family. So let me go ahead and play this real quick. This is just an example of how these people, these devils, will go around spreading rumors and lies about you and try to get the community involved in uh participating in harassments against you to try to get you to react so they can call law enforcement and get you locked up this is a prime example of it a 76 year old garden city man is now in prison for terrorizing two ada county families for years he sent close to 50 postcards harassing the families he even sent cards to local schools and neighbors saying that family members were pedophiles, sex offenders, or drunks. All of this because of an argument with a stranger over a parking space. Tonight, our Joe Paris gives us an exclusive look at the case from investigators. A case that involves a painting of Adolf Hitler, two live rattlesnakes, and an old-fashioned typewriter. A chance encounter with a stranger in the parking lot of a post office led to years of terror for a Boise family. A Boise woman argued with a complete stranger after he parked in a handicapped parking space without a handicapped placard. Little did she know, the man that she confronted was so furious about the incident that he began targeting the family for years. That man is 76-year-old Frank Abbott Sweeney. Well, we had done a little research and we, we had known that he'd been involved in the legal system prior. He had um, some issues back east. Uh, he'd been incarcerated at least three times in the federal system. He had been involved in some um, protection issues as well, and that he had um, actually hurt a police officer, shot a police officer with a machine gun back in the 60s. Darren Salman, an investigator with the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, says within weeks of the incident, the family started getting postcards, all of them written on a typewriter. The messages on the cards included accusations that various members of the family were criminals, pedophiles, drug dealers, or infected with HIV. None of it true, and the victims had no idea who was doing this to them. And neither did investigators. But Mr. Sweeney, you see, you see their narrative there. Doesn't that sound very similar to people that are targeted? You know, they have no idea who's doing it or where it's coming from. They just know that there are people involved in the harassment that are spreading slander, rumors, and lies. See, this situation is a little bit different because the uh, victims of this were able to pinpoint uh, over time who, it, who the uh, harassment was coming from. Maybe this, man, this family got together, put money together to get investigators to really look into the matter. See, that's something that targeted individuals don't have we don't have the resources the, the financial uh, uh capital that that's needed to do a thorough investigation to find out where this shit's coming from so we're stuck just going through hell because we don't have the financial means like some other people do to find out where the harassment is coming from whereas with this family and it kind of sounded like there was a couple of families that he did this to um and ultimately they were able to investigate and find out it came from him 
There's also a theme of uh, Nazism. This dude was a, a fan of Adolf Hitler. And this whole program has the stench of Nazism, if that's even a word. I'm probably not even saying the right thing. But just having to do with not, uh, Nazi Germany, um, the brown shirts were known as, you know, they're the modern day gang stalkers, right? What the brown shirts were back in the days of Hitler is what the gang stalkers are now. You know, these people that go around and stalk and, you know, just enact these um, Stasi tactics against us and stuff like that. So this is just a prime example of this type of shit. And notice that the perpetrator is also a criminal. The perpetrator has a criminal fucking record. So that goes back to what I was saying earlier about with the courts. How when I was going to court for my bullshit ass charges, which weren't serious charges at all, I witnessed these DAs making deals with some of these defendants uh, of engaging or uh, being involved in these programs. That's, that's supposed to be part of national security. Let me continue playing this shit. He did a pretty good job of covering his tracks. He would utilize different drop-off points, different post offices. Um, he would buy all his postage with cash, things of that nature. So um, at that point, it becomes an issue of when's, when's he going to slip up and when are we going to find something that, that we, can, we can hang our hat on and go forward with. An alarming amount of personal information about the family was included in the cards. Sweeney also sent postcards to schools and neighbors of the victims, claiming to be from the sex offender registry and writing that the victim's husband sexually abused the child. Again, was not true. His motivation was basically... You see that theme of, of accusing a person of being a pedophile? Because pedophilia, right? If, you're, if you are known to be a pedophile and you are guilty of that shit and you go to prison or jail, you know, it's always... That's just the, the norm that people are going to want to kill you or, or, or beat you up or harm you because you harmed a child, right? But see, that's the type of narrative they'll put on targeted individuals and communities so as to try to get somebody enraged to the point to where they want to assault or possibly even kill the target just because they simply want to record, record their environment and what's going on around them. It has nothing to do with uh, 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 capturing footage of children and then saving that footage. Oftentimes when I get footage of, of children and stuff like that, like I delete it. Some things I might keep because it's relevant to the harassment and it's just for the purposes of uh, trying to articulate to maybe a, an authority that can investigate and look into this. Like, look, this is what happened. Here's another video showing a trend. Here's another video showing a pattern or a trend. Connect the dots and you'll see what I'm talking about. If I were to do something like that, it would be for that purpose. But these assholes, these demonic evil ass people will try to manipulate it to make it seem like you're some sort of sicko when you're not okay so there's that theme of pedophilia basically revenge and embarrassment of people that he felt had had embarrassed him and that he had used his means which is basically a private investigator to find personal information criminal histories and all that of people he he should not have had access to at all but that's see he used his means of getting a private investigator to do this shit. So obviously, it, it's like he must have been part of a network of stalkers. Cause like who 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 does that, right? It doesn't seem like this dude has money. You know, he's in and out of prison and stuff like that. Like, how was he able to get a private investigator or hire a private investigator to do all these things? Or maybe maybe it's easier than what I'm I'm thinking. I don't know. I used to work um, in private investigations when I was in uh, the state of Texas. I actually had to have a license for that as well, along with my other licenses for working in uh, private security. And, you know, it, it's like there's more to it than just the private investigator aspect of it. You know, you have the government element that's involved in this shit, too. So obviously these people have means and ways of trying to find shit out about you and then using the information they have about you using it against you to, to try to cause you harm. But let me finish playing this. It's just a weak link in the system. Somebody should not have provided that information to him. All of this continued for years, with more than 40 postcards being sent. Like any of us would feel, they felt victimized. They felt um, threatened, knowing whether this person is actually, you know, surveilling their house, um, following them around, following their children around giving specific details about their, their child's school schedule in a whole other state. 
And that's very troubling. And as you can imagine, uh, you know, we all lock our doors at night and want to go to sleep. It'd be very hard to, to get some rest and to know that somebody's out there watching them, um, exploiting them, and, uh, and, and, then, and then terrorizing them in that way. It's, 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 a, it's a way of mental terrorism, I believe. Three years after Sweeney started stalking the Boise family, he started stalking a new family after a fight at a bank drive through window. This time, though, he was caught on camera. And soon enough, investigators zeroed in on him. Several agencies... See, this dude, he don't have money like that to keep hiring these private investigators to do this shit. He is part of a criminal network of people that have access to... It, it, it probably ties into the government. Maybe these are former government agents who have access to this shit who have gone rogue. They reach out to these people. Hey, I got a problem with this person or this family. What can we do to, 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 to give them a hard time, so to speak, or to try to get rid of them? And then they put you on this, this, this program. So this dude didn't have money like that to get all these private investigators. There's more to this story than what they're, you know, allowing the public to see at this point. He's raided his house, found evidence that he was, in fact, the culprit. But that wasn't all they found. We found a couple portraits of Adolf Hitler, um, some writings from some, you know, renowned and known um, Nazi type folks. Um, but we also found some things in his house that were just a little odd. First, namely, two rattlesnakes. He had two live rattlesnakes. Sweeney was sentenced earlier this. He, he had his kin, his kin folk living right there in the house with him. Goddamn snakes. And just like I said earlier, that whole narrative of the, the Stasi tactics in, in Nazi Germany, that's exactly what this program is. It's, it's a derivative of what the uh, Nazi Germany did to uh, the people in, in Germany, I guess the Jews. The same fucking tactics. Portraits of Adolf, you know, renowned and known, known type folks. Um, but we also found some things in his house that were just a little odd. First, namely, two rattlesnakes. He had two live rattlesnakes. Sweeney was sentenced earlier this month to more than four years in prison. People might look and say, oh, and he got 51 months. See, that's exactly what needs to happen to these people. They need to start locking these fucking people up, okay? They're sitting up there locking up targeted individuals that are being set up by these same fucking people going out there uh, orchestrating against the target, uh, provoking the target into a reaction, and then contacting law enforcement. And then, then they try to play victim and act like they weren't doing nothing or they didn't do anything, right? And then they use it as a means to arrest the target. That's the same. This, it's the same shit. Months. Look at all. Look at his history. Look at his past. Well, that was a way better sentence or a way better result than we would have gotten trying to prosecute this through the state or the county system. And it's not that our state and county counterparts are able to do that. It's just the sentencing guidelines are minimal compared to the federal. And so it behooved us to take it on a federal level and, and involve the inspection service to do that. Investigators say the families are more than relieved now that Sweeney is behind bars. The guy in the shadows is no longer out and able to do this anymore. We know we got the right guy. And now we can go home tonight and, and have a good night's rest knowing that he's behind bars. Joe Paris, Idaho's News Channel 7. All right, so see, that family, they were fortunate enough to, um, they were very fortunate enough to be able to hire um, an investigator to look into their matter and pinpoint exactly where this shit was coming from, okay? So the, oftentimes that might be the same situation with us. It's coming. It, it it started with someone, or it just might be a case where you know the government, for whatever reason, felt like it was just in the best interest to watch you because of your travel activities or whatever. Again, which is fine. Watch whatever. You know, my problem is don't lie. Don't 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 tell lies to to try to prop up your reports just so that you can continue to get funding so you can keep your fucking job. Because that's essentially what they're doing when they're going to these FISA courts, okay? They're going up there, they're lying, you know, they're, they're, they're exaggerating things so that they can continue this program and continue to get the funding for this program that they're getting, okay? So there's that aspect of it where it's government involvement, and then there's also the, the um, you know, the, the, the kind of criminal uh, element of it as well. To me, it's all criminal because it violates your constitutional right. If it violates the Constitution, it's criminal. Point blank, period. Okay? So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect the FISA video that I wanted to show you guys initially just to give more information as to what's going on with that. 
And like I said, it would be very interesting to see how this shit plays out. If our targeting subsides as a result of this program not being renewed, then we all know where this shit was coming from. So it's just, right now it's just the waiting game just to see how things play out. And again, I'm not against them continuing surveillance for the sake of national security. I'm not saying anything about doing away with security. But again, what does sabotaging a person's life and using a person's communications against them when it has nothing to do with terrorism or national security, why is that necessary? That's the part of it that I have a problem with. So I, I've said that repeatedly because I just want to be clear. Okay. Um, that's all I got for now. I'm going to connect uh, the video that I was speaking of initially to this so that you guys can see. All right. Until the next one. Goitine, many of my constituents will watch this hearing and they'll say, well, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, I'm not a foreigner. Why should that bother me? What would you say? Americans' communications are swept up in enormous volumes, so enormous that the government won't tell us how big it is because it would be a very awkward number for the government to disclose. I suspect that's the real reason. Um, and those communications are available to FBI agents without a warrant or a court order of any kind. And uh, you talked about these backdoor searches, and that's been an intense focus of the committee. Uh, could you help define that for folks so they understand the, the risk there? Sure. What a backdoor search is, is an electronic query of data obtained under Section 702. So the communications are obtained. They are placed into data systems um, at the NSA and then shared with the FBI, the National Counterterrorism S uh, Center, and the CIA. Um, and then agents can run electronic queries of those data systems using identifiers associated with Americans. So using an American's email address, for example. They can plug that in, and that will return any communications that were obtained under Section 702 that have an American on one end of them. And it almost feels like there's a digital file out there about millions of Americans. Uh, and, and I'm sort of wondering how, and we've tried to get straight answers uh, from folks who, who work in the government about this question, but what we've learned is it's upwards of 10,000 people who can conduct some of these backdoor searches. Have any of your studies um, evaluated the breadth of individuals who can engage in this violation of our civil liberties? No, we don't know the number, but I think... Isn't that scary? Shouldn't we? I mean, it seems like something we should know. Uh, how many people can do backdoor searches into information that was not collected pursuant to any probable cause or a warrant? Yeah, it would be a good thing to know. And one of the reasons why I think we should be curious about it is because uh, the government has told the FISA court that one of the reasons for all of these violations we've seen is that FBI agents didn't understand the standard for those searches. And that standard is that the search has to be reasonably likely to obtain foreign intelligence or evidence of a crime. Well, and that doesn't sound like rocket science to me. And that standard has been in place for 15 years. But they, they break it. Well, I mean, I just read an order from the foreign intelligence, the, the FISC, the court. And the court said, well, you weren't just using these searches and queries to get legitimate law enforcement information. At times, people at the FBI were searching themselves, searching their ex-lovers, searching their neighbors uh, in this system. Um, and, and so it, it seems as though they're not really, there's not a standard that's ad adhered to. It's adhered to often in the breach. There were 278,000 yeah. violations of that standard in 2021. It, I mean, if, if you've got 278,000 violations of the standard, the, as you've said, the breach is the standard. In a lot of ways. So we have this tactical question coming up. We have FISA that is set to expire, and I believe we should let it. I believe it, does, it, it, the, the standard of violation of breach is so pervasive that the patient is not savable, that we have to design something totally different outside of 702. And then I have other colleagues who are, who are like-minded in my desire to protect civil liberties, but who suggest tactically that the best approach is to try to insert strong warrant requirements. This is my seventh year in, in Congress, Mr. Kiko. I certainly don't have your experience, but I want to draw on it because I, I want to get your advice. I've gone down this road with the Cheneyistas and, and, and others who um, bring us to the precipice of reform and then at the last moment 
It seems as though the civil libertarians uh, rarely prevail over those who, who purport to be defending national security, no matter how many violations of our liberties occur. And so would you advise uh, a reform effort or an expiration uh, strategy and, and why? Well, I would. That's a very tough question, and I know that's why you ask it. And I would, I can actually see my preference would be some kind of reform effort with teeth and accountability because there hasn't been any teeth and there hasn't been any accountability in, in the oversight that's been conducted. We're always at the end of the system. They say they're going to do something. It never gets done. Four years later, we find out there's massive violations. Everybody comes. Well, we're going to do it this time. But there's no accountability among the people that are breaking the law. There's no accountability among the administration. It doesn't matter. There's nothing. Yeah, it sounds like there need to be penalties. Thank you for your testimony. I yield back. Thank you. Chair recognizes uh, the gentlelady, the ranking member, Ms. Jackson Lee. Uh, and thank the witnesses very much. Just a, a, a slight moment down memory lane, Ms. Goteen. <clears throat> Something called COINTELPRO. I won't ask you to um, get in the weeds, uh, but it was used extensively against Dr. Martin Luther King and the whole um, landscape of civil rights activists and workers to give minimal liberties to African Americans uh, during the 1950s and 60s. And so here we are again um, with um, what was needed uh, to be able to protect Americans. And I think it's important to indicate that the process was uh, that if there was communication and it was with a foreign operative foreign citizen, the FBI, for Americans, would not be targeting you, not supposed to be, but were targeting that foreign citizen or the communications thereof. How did we mess up so badly? Wow. <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, what I would say is that FISA, as enacted in 1978, uh, required the government to obtain an individualized court order uh, showing probable cause that the target of surveillance was a foreign power or an agent of foreign power when domestically placing a wiretap to collect communications between even foreign targets and Americans. And that was to safeguard the Americans' constitutional rights that they have in that communication. What Section 702 did is it got rid of that requirement. Um, and it enabled the government to say that as long as it's targeting a foreigner, we don't really have to worry so much about the Americans' constitutional rights. Now, that's not actually what Section 702 says. It says you're going to pull this in, the American side of the communications, but you should minimize it. You should delete it. You should not share it. Unfortunately, that's not what has happened. So that, that is, and I, because I'm, that's a crux of one of the elements of the problem. Absolutely. There this mountain piles up and no one feels any compulsion, uh, not compelled to say, let me immediately send it into the incinerator, throw it into the trash, get rid of it, shred it, etc. It doesn't happen. Right. And even, even if the FBI comes across Americans' information it, or other agencies, NSA, CIA, um, that, that doesn't even seem to be foreign intelligence or evidence of a crime, uh, they pretty much never get rid of it until it reaches the age off uh, uh, deadline, which is five years, it's five years with a lot of exceptions. So it's five years, or in many cases, much longer. Let me try to, to hone in on what Americans may be impacted by with respect to these cases and this pile of information in which an agency has not complied with the guidelines that Congress put in place and or their own policies. To your knowledge, is the evidence found, or has the evidence found its way, found in this way, typically excluded in a criminal case? Well, in most criminal cases, the government doesn't give the notice to criminal defendants that is required under FISA. There's been a long pattern of the government evading its notice obligations. And if the defendant doesn't know 
that FISA has been used, that Section 702 has been used in that defendant's case, there's no way the defendant can raise a challenge, let alone have the evidence excluded. And uh, most likely, the way that the government has been avoiding this notice obligation is through parallel construction, which is a well-documented practice of essentially recreating the evidence using less controversial means. So one of the things that Congress should do uh, if and when it reauthorizes Section 702 is uh, to prohibit parallel construction. If I could quickly speak to Congressman Gates's question, I think the problem with simply letting Section 702 expire is that I will allow you to do so. The chairman's going to give me a little bit more time to be able to answer. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but I if, you, if you'll go quickly. I'll go very quickly. Um, is that mm-hmm. Congress will then lose the opportunity to make necessary reforms to other surveillance authorities and to close gaps that are in those authorities that allow the government to operate without any statutory authority at all. And if Congress merely lets Section 702 expire, the government will shift, will shift its surveillance acti- activities to these other methods. So let me quickly um, get from you um, the singular change, other than what we just talked about, parallel construction, that we should be looking at. The well, gentlelady's I, time's expired, but you may answer that question. If I have any message for you today at all, it's that you cannot just go with one singular change. A warrant requirement for backdoor searches is necessary. It is far from sufficient. There are other reforms that need to be made, not only to Section 702, but also to overseas surveillance that currently happens without any statutory authority, to the practice of purchasing Fourth Amendment protected information from data brokers, uh, and several other reforms that I mentioned in my written testimony. Thank you. I yield back. situation. Um, is the State Department going to comply with that? Are you anywhere close? I, I will say we take our oversight obligations extremely seriously. Um, we obviously got the letter from the chairman. We've been reviewing it, um, and we will be engaging with his office on the matter. Israel? Israel question? Yeah, Wait. go ahead. I'll, I'll come back. Yeah. The Iraqi coordination framework, which uh, they donated to the Iraqi government, they are calling for increased the Iranian assets in Iraq, that Tehran could uh, continue supply Baghdad with gas for electricity. How do you see this calling, and how do you going to respond to it? Um, let me say a few things about it. Number one, since 2018, uh, the State Department has provided a number of waivers in consultation with Congress that allow Iraq to import electricity from Iran. 
Any funds owed to Iran are paid into a restricted account that can then be used by Iran to purchase non-sanctioned goods, such as food uh, and medicine. The 19th such waiver was provided in March. We talked about it uh, a bit from uh, in this briefing room. Um, and we're not in a position to preview any future decisions about whether to renew the waiver. But beyond that, uh, I want to speak to the underlying issue, which is that the United States strongly supports Iraq's path to energy at autonomy and are working closely with our Iraqi partners to see that goal achieved. Uh, just today, the um, uh, Iraq signed a $27, $27 billion energy deal with Total Energies. We believe that was an important step towards this goal. Uh, and we enthusiastically welcome the development. It's something the Secretary was personally involved in, in advocating for. Um, the deal with Total uh, and projects like those laid out during the higher coordinating committee we had with Iraq in February will ultimately allow Iraq to reduce its methane emissions, improve public health for Iraqis, and utilize a natural resource that could be providing electricity to Iraq's people and its economy.